Okay, so you already watched the video and you've moved on to the next page. And so I'm gonna go over some of those answers with you just to make sure you've got the gist of it before we move on. So I'm gonna share my screen with you again. I didn't mean to hit that button, but I think that's okay. Um, all right, so you should have watched the video. If not, we'll figure it out later. But which two things are needed or used to make energy during cellular respiration? The two things that are used to make energy are glucose and oxygen. So your body breathes in um, oxygen, you get glucose when you eat, and then those two things are used in this process to make energy. So now cellular respiration makes something called ATP that is very important. What is ATP? It's energy. In high school, you'll talk about how it's a little more complex than that. It's a molecule that stores energy and so on, but we're for this, for like for our purposes, ATP is energy. Cellular respiration makes two other things that get removed as waste. So it makes ATP and then it makes two waste products. The two waste products are carbon dioxide, which you breathe out, and water, which you remove when you go to the bathroom or when you sweat or other things like that. So we are on our notes. So these notes are a little bit dense. Um, cellular respiration is, like I said, the most important process. I, I cannot explain how important this will be. When you take high school biology, you will talk about like this times a million. You will go through all the actual like ways that the process happens and there's different steps and so on. So having this basis is going to be so helpful for you. So please read along with me. Cellular respiration notes. Cellular respiration is a process that occurs in the mitochondria of a cell of all living things, such as plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi. Now, one quick note on that is bacteria, if they're, pro, if they're um, prokaryotic cells, don't have mitochondria in it, but they still do cellular respiration. All living things do cellular respiration because all living things need energy. Every single thing that is alive does cellular respiration. All right, next. Cellular respiration is a process that makes ATP, which is a form of energy that cells can use for daily functions. All living things do cellular respiration because every single living organism needs to be able to make energy to do all cell functions. Cells have many mitochondria and cells that need to make lots of energy, such as muscle cells, have even more mitochondria. All right, so which of the following types of organisms do cellular respiration? Check all that apply. So as I'm reading, if you think they do cellular respiration, check it. Plants, animals, bacteria, fungi. Make sure you've checked your answers. You should have checked all four. It said it right up there in the text. And also remember, anything that's alive does cellular respiration. All right, what does cellular respiration make? A, energy called ATP. B, glucose and oxygen. C, more mitochondria, or D, larger muscles? Pick your answer. All right, you should have said A, energy called ATP. The whole point of cellular respiration is that it makes energy. Why do all living things need to do cellular respiration? All right, take a couple seconds to write this out here. So all living things do cellular respiration because, all living things need to do this process because, you should be typing, I'm not gonna give you this answer right now, so I wanna see what you put when you turn it in. You're typing. If you need more time, pause me um, and keep going. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on. But if, again, if you're not done, pause my video, hit play when you're ready. We're gonna keep reading. This gets a little more complex here, but it's really, really important. Every chemical reaction, such as cellular respiration, has reactants and products. Reactants are what are used to make new products in the reaction. Products are what get made or produced as a result of the reaction. So chemical reactions can be written in equations like the one below. So the equation you see here, it's written with the um, like chemical notation and also the words. And so this actually is the chemical equation for cellular respiration. So glucose plus oxygen, then there's an arrow showing the process is happening becomes carbon dioxide and water in ATP. So I'm reading this bullet point below the equation. In a chemical reaction, the reactants come before the arrow because they are there in the beginning. And then the products come after the arrow because they are the result of the reaction. They get produced. So you start with your reactants, then the reaction happens in the arrow, and then you've got new products. All right. So based on the notes in the chemical equation above, so you've got to look up at that equation. Which of the following are the reactants of cellular respiration? 
the reactants. So you should be looking at that chemical equation, trying to get your answer in your head. Is it A, glucose and carbon dioxide? B, glucose and oxygen? C, water and ATP? Or D, ATP and oxygen? Take your answer. My dog is waiting for you. He's under the table. Let's see if we can say hi. It was raining this morning while we walked. He's not happy. All right, your answer should have been glucose and oxygen because, well, we already know that those are the two things that are used. We already said that. But also, if you look up at the equation, those are the two things that come before the arrow. So your answer should have been B, glucose and oxygen. All right, based on the notes in the chemical equation, which of the following are the products? So now we're looking for what gets produced. There are three of them. Is it A, ATP, oxygen, and glucose? B, carbon dioxide, water, and oxygen? C, carbon dioxide, water, and ATP? Or D, glucose, ATP, and water? Definitely look back up at that equation to help you as you're thinking about your answer. Take a couple more seconds. Awkward silence. Okay, you should have picked C, carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Because if I look up at this equation, those are the three things that come after the era. All right, a couple more notes, we're basically done. The reactants of cellular respiration are glucose and oxygen, as you already told me on the question earlier. The mitochondria uses glucose from your food and the oxygen you breathe to do cellular respiration. This is why it is so important to breathe in oxygen and eat food. The products of cellular respiration are ATP or energy, carbon dioxide, and water. ATP is energy that cells can use for functions, and without ATP, an organism would die. Carbon dioxide and water get removed as waste. All right, so this question here says, based on all of the notes, why is it important that you breathe in oxygen and eat food? What does your body need the oxygen and glucose for? So you've been hearing forever that humans need to eat or animals need to eat to stay alive. You've been hearing that you need to breathe to stay alive. Well, this tells you why. We just learned why we need those things. So answer the question, and then when you're done, move on to the exit ticket. And then you are, um, oops, wrong button. And then you are done with this lesson, which is really awesome. And you'll be ready to learn about photosynthesis tomorrow. I hope to see you at office hours, um, or call me, text me if you have questions, or if you just want to say, hey, like definitely pop up office hours. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, and make sure you have done any missing work, and that you keep staying on track for promotion. Have a wonderful rest of your day.